Hello Westford! The school committee voted in favor of the superintendent's recommended budget cuts. A Westford meteorologist weighs in on this winter's extreme cold. And Zach Cataldo stopped by the Westford Cat Studios this week with his new Tesla Model 3. I'm Ira Kelts, and it's time for Westford Cat News. Before we get started, I'd like to remind you that Westford Cat has a Facebook page called Westford Cat News, where we post links to all our news stories and event announcements. Please like us on Facebook. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our daily free newsletter at westfordcatnews.org newsletter. We have breaking news this week. On January 9th, Town Manager Jody Ross announced the appointment of Jeff Morissette as the new Director of Land Use Management. Jeff has been the town planner for several years, assisting the planning board with some high-profile issues, including the controversial approval of an asphalt plant at 540 Groton Road. We'll have more on Morissette at westfordcatnews.org. On January 8th, school committee members unanimously approved Superintendent Everett Olson's recommended $1.3 million in budget cuts for fiscal 2019. The cuts bring his budget in line with Town Manager Jody Ross's recommended budget of $57,928,362 for the year that begins July 1st. I would present the same list to you, um, recommend your approval with a um, approval of a budget of $57,928,362, which is what the town manager's appropriation level is, which is a 1.5% increase to the fiscal 2018 budget, plus a about a 0.94% um, amount for the override amount, which is specifically devoted to you can find Olson's proposed budget cuts at westfordcatnews.org and searching for the words proposed cuts. Watch the entire school committee meeting at westfordcat.org. Here's News Director Joyce Polino Crane with a highlight from the Selectmen's meeting. Thanks, Ira. After two years of overseeing potential locations for a dog park, Selectmen took no action on the task force's final recommendation to use a five-acre parcel on Farmer Way, where Stony Brook School is located. Task Force Chairman Edie Frischoni explained why a parcel on Gage Lane had been ruled out by her committee members. The Dog Park Task Force came to the decision to recommend Farmer Way as the most suitable location for a dog park. Despite earlier objections from the school committee, we believe that their concerns have met or can be addressed. It further recommends that Gage Lane be removed from consideration for the following reasons. <clears throat> it would not be large enough for a town with nearly 3,000 dogs and parking could be a major challenge at times. The site does not lend itself to expansion and timing precludes us knowing whether or not there is a water problem there, much has been alluded to by some of the neighbors. We do not want a dog park that has considerable potential for failure. Whereas Farmer's Way is a great location and it meets every single criteria that we set out several months ago. Selectmen directed the task force members to work with the Parks and Recreation Commission as it begins writing a master plan over the next two years or so. That means the town will not build a dog park anytime in the near future. I don't want to just kill it tonight. Um, I also don't want to keep every month coming back and, and discussing it. So, no, I, um, 
Yeah, Mark. Yeah, so I, I think that's the appropriate next step. I mean, this has been, um, we are playing whack-a-mole. And, and I, as I said at the last meeting, this is, I've never been a part of something that's as much of a, of a not in my backyard um, discussion as this has been every time we talk about a, a location. Um, so at this point, my recommendation would be it gets included in all the work that's happening with the recreation uh, master plan. Um, and we see what happens. You can watch the entire Selectman's meeting at westfordcat.org. Back to you, Ira. WBZ-TV meteorologist and lifelong Westford resident, Terry Eliason, spoke with Joyce Polino Crane on January 9th about the Arctic chill in the Northeast from Christmas Day to early January. Here's Eliason with some science behind the big chill. Yeah, so La Nina is sort of the, the sister, if you will, of El Nino. Uh, La Nina it basically means you have a, a cooler than normal water off of the um, South America. And the, how does that affect our weather? It's so far away, you know, down the equatorial Pacific off of South America. But um, when you have that larger body of, of cooler or conversely nor or warmer water down there, it does a lot of things to the atmosphere that affects um, you know, globally, really, it affects the, the weather patterns. And so you have this, fr this front-loaded La Nina. You have a, a very wild and jet stream with the plunging into the, into the central part of the and eastern part of the United States. And you also have what, the polar vortex, which became sort of a, a buzzword over the last couple of years. Uh, the polar vortex is, is basically a, a, an area up over the Arctic um, that typically stays there, and you have strong winds that circle the Arctic, and they kind of keep the cold bottled up there. Uh, well, this year, and, and again, what we saw a couple of years ago, is uh, some of those winds up in the Arctic have sort of decreased a bit, and that sort of allows dips in that vortex, and and that's what's happened here, is that the winds have, have decreased, and the, there's a giant dip in that polar vortex, and so a lot of that cold Arctic air is allowed to spill down into the United States. Elison has a weather page for Westford residents at westford.org slash weather. Find the entire podcast at westfordcatnews.org. And now, here's our feature of the week. Resident Zach Cataldo is among the first in New England to drive a Tesla Model 3, the latest battery-operated vehicle produced by inventor and business mogul Elon Musk. Cataldo was an early adopter of electric vehicles, being one of the first to get a Tesla Model X in spring of 2016. As the co-founder and co-host of the YouTube channel Now You Know with his son Jesse, they have grown the channel to over 43,000 subscribers in less than two years. Here's Cataldo demonstrating his car to Joyce Polino Crane. I mean, the nice thing about um, autopilot is that it opens up a lot of your brain. Instead of Basically, every minute that you're driving a car as a real driver, you're making about 100 micro decisions. And so what I mean by that is you're staying in your lane, you're checking to make sure that people aren't doing something funny, you're checking the, your rear view mirror, you're making all these quick calculations in your head. When you go to autopilot, I become the supervisor of the car. I'm still alert, I'm still paying attention, like I know there's a guy behind me who's not happy I'm going this slow. But the car is doing all the rest of the decisions about, oh, is he going to cut in front of me? Do I need to slow down? It takes care of that. So it actually makes me, I believe, a safer driver because I'm able to focus on kind of the bigger picture. I don't have to focus on the little things like, you know, just staying in my lane. So we're going 78 miles per hour at the moment. And it's a very smooth, com comfortable ride. Yeah, what's amazing about electric cars is that you get all the power from the very first microsecond. You don't wait for an engine to rev up and give you the power a few, uh, you know, a second later. The other wonderful thing about electric motors is that they're efficient. So when you drive your ICE car, as we call them, internal combustion engine car, um, that is about 25% efficient. So 75% of the energy is being wasted in heat. On an electric car, they're over 90% efficient. This car is somewhere around 94%. So all that energy is putting, being put into moving you forward. According to Zach, the new model from Tesla is the first affordable car with a 310-mile long-range battery and sports car speed. 
By the way, if you're thinking of buying a Tesla Model 3, be prepared to wait. The Tesla website says orders placed today will be delivered in 12 to 18 months. Finance Director Dan O'Donnell is here with an update on ongoing budget hearings for fiscal 2019. This is the first in a series of appearances by O'Donnell as town officials finalize the town's financial needs for the year that begins July 1st. Hi, I'm Dan O'Donnell, Western's Finance Director. I'm here to give you a brief update on the financial department's status for uh, January of 2018. Uh, right now, the Finance Committee and Board of Selectmen are in the middle of their uh, budget hearings. They're held on Thursday nights at 7 p.m. in the Town Hall meeting room. So, on January 18th, uh, we have another budget hearing and we're reviewing public safety, uh, the water enterprise and recreation enterprise. Uh, for public safety, the town manager did recommend uh, hiring two additional firefighter EMTs and two additional police officers, so we should have some discussion there as well. And then finally, we're going to wrap up the budget hearings on January 25th. Uh, we'll have the Western Public Schools back if there are any pending questions. Then we'll review the debt service budget, the capital plan, and the revenue budget. Now, if you have any interest in, or questions on how the uh, Western budget works, it's important that you either attend these meetings or watch them on TV. Uh, the town administrative staff is actually available to uh, answer any questions that you have as well. Uh, that's what's happening in finance for January. I'm Dan O'Donnell. Thanks for watching. Rekha Sharma is here with a health tip on the benefits of amaranthus seeds. Hi everyone, I'm Rekha Sharma, your Ayurveda practitioner, back with a new health tip for Vespa Cat News. Today I'm going to talk about amaranthus seeds. They are excellent superfood and loaded with antioxidants. They are gluten-free and high source of protein, just like quinoa. Regular consumption of amaranthus seed reduces hair loss and premature graying. It reduces the joint pains and prevents cancer. It is excellent for people with chronic diseases and high blood pressure. Amaranthus flour can be used to thicken soups, sauces, and can also be used for making gluten-free breads. If you have any allergies to amaranthus, please contact your PCP before consuming. I'll be back with the new health tip. Bye for now. Well, we've gotten past a major snowstorm and an Arctic freeze. So what will winter bring us in the coming week? Giuseppe has the answer. Hello and whispers. This is Giuseppe with the weather forecast for this weekend, week of January 15th. Now that the crazy bear cold weather has left the area, we have an average weather forecast in with temperatures where they should be at this time of year. Here's what's coming up. That was your best weather. Have a great week, everyone. Guinea pigs, acorn, and butternut are available now for adoption at the Lowell Humane Society. Here's Patty Stalker with more. The Lowell Humane Society has some wonderful pets available now for adoption, like this guinea pig duo, acorn and butternut. Here's shelter volunteer Mary Rockwood with more information. Hi, I'm Mary Rockwood. I am a volunteer here at the Lowell Humane Society, and I have two wonderful little guinea pigs, acorn and butternut that are up for adoption. Uh, we're not quite sure how old they are, but they came to us in October. They were in foster and they were just put up for adoption in uh, December. Uh, they're looking to go together because they like to be together. These guys love snacks, vegetables such as romaine lettuce. We don't use any kind of iceberg lettuce. That's not good for them. Carrots, they can have a few of those. They do have to have guinea pig food that has vitamin C in them because they don't make their own. Strawberries every once in a while. Other than that, they are happy, happy little guys. I was playing with them this morning and they love to cuddle under your neck. Both of them, they are both adorable. And they're looking for somebody to come in and take them both home and make them their forever home. So if you're interested, please come to the Lowell Humane Society and ask for butternut and acorn. 
If you'd like to learn more about Acorn and Butternut, or any of the other pets available now for adoption, or if you'd like to learn how to volunteer, foster a pet, make a donation, or fill their wish list, go to LowellHumaneSociety.org or visit them at 951 Broadway Street in Lowell. Call 978-452-7781. For Westford Cat, I'm Patty Stalker. Now, here's our Director of Outreach Marketing, Sarah Fletcher, with suggestions for things to do around town. Thanks, Ira. Freda Locker, principal pianist for the Boston Ballet, performs Romeo and Juliet on Sunday, January 28th at 4 p.m. at the Paris Center for the Arts. Locker's pre-concert presentation will include a description of the intriguing history of the ballet score and musical excerpts. The pre-concert talk begins at 3.15. Tickets are $15 for adults with discounts for PCA members, seniors, teens, and college students. Anyone under 12 is free, and piano students are also free with a paying adult. For more information, visit westford.org PCA. The Fletcher Library's Cookbook Club is reading Jamie's Food Revolution by Jamie Oliver this month and we'll discuss it on Tuesday, January 16th at 7 p.m. Copies are available at the main desk. If you make one of Oliver's recipes, feel free to bring it to the group discussion. Call Sarah Reagan with any questions at 978-399-2309. How about doing a little cha-cha-cha this year? The Rodenbush Community Center is offering beginner ballroom dance classes through the DNE School of Dance at 66 Princeton Street in North Chelmsford. Classes go from 8 to 9.30 p.m. beginning on Thursday, January 18th, and they run for six weeks. Add a little spice to your life by learning the waltz, foxtrot, rumba, and how to swing. The fee is $105, but Westford residents get a discount. For more information, visit rodenbush.org. Come take a tour of the Westford Cat Studio on Saturday, January 20th between 10 and noon. Learn about our equipment and classes while enjoying a pastry and a cup of coffee courtesy of the Mary's Community Thrift Store. You'll also get a coupon for 10% off to use that day at the store. The event is free of charge. You can find out more on our website at westfordcat.org or on our Westford Cat Facebook page. Westward Cat and the Marys are both located in the plaza at 487 Groton Road. I'm Sarah Fletcher, Marketing Outreach Manager for Westward Cat, and that's it for this week's Cultural Picks. Back to you, Ira. That's it for now, Westford. We leave you with images taken by many of you during the January 4th snowstorm. Many thanks to all who shared their photos with us on Facebook. <laughs>